Hey there, I am back with episode two of Free the Pip Friday. This is really all about sharing those decks that maybe you don't see opened up all the time. So those rare decks that if they're in someone's collection, they're probably sealed. And I really wanna make this an entire series about celebrating the entire deck. Now I spend a lot of time on this channel looking at these fully custom designs where nearly every card brings all this stunning artistry and skill to the table. And those are creations that I think really should be enjoyed fully. So I'm just gonna take a second to encourage all of you guys watching, open up some decks, open some rare decks, take it all in and really celebrate the time and effort that these talented creators have put into their designs. But you're gonna see me continue to use this series to showcase some of the rare decks in my own collection. And of course, you guys are gonna have a chance to vote for uh, which ones I open up, either here on my channel page or on my Instagram. So let's get down to today's deck. Uh, sorry to those of you guys who voted to see the Dynastine deck from Gentleman Wake. It's a great deck and I'm sure we're going to have another crack at it. But for today's selection, chosen by all of you, we have Hunters of York by Nikolai Arrow. And Nikolai Arrow is a tremendously talented artist and deck designer, has a lot of really outstanding decks to his name. But these decks for him are special. These decks were released on Kickstarter in 2018, but the first sketches go all the way back to 2015. And according to Nikolai, this was basically his go-to deck design to work on across those three years. He collaborated with a couple of other designers, Martin Helgren and Marianne Larson, bouncing ideas off of them, continuing to evolve the deck. So this is really three years of work to create these decks. A tremendous effort went into them and it really shows in the designs. Uh, the decks themselves are inspired or set in 1636 York in England. Uh, but in addition to kind of pulling from the time period and the costumes you might see in that era, they are also inspired by some events that were happening in Netherlands at the same time. 1636, the Netherlands were going through what's today known as tulip mania. It's basically this speculative bubble where tulips had just been introduced from Turkey into Europe for the first time, and people decided they just loved them, and people were willing to pay these exorbitant prices. The price of tulips went up and up and up and up to the point where people were paying many times the annual salary of a skilled worker. There's one example of a tulip being listed for 10 times what a skilled worker would make. Uh, so people were paying more for these than houses. Uh, really got out of hand for a single tulip. Uh, the market eventually crashed in 1637. Some people lost some money. Uh, and it's today looked at by economists as the first example of a speculative bubble. Prices getting way out of hand and then crashing down really suddenly when the bubble pops. So that's the sort of backdrop of the decks. Uh, it comes in two different versions. You have the master and the mistress version. They're definitely complementary decks, but they're also decks that despite sharing a lot of the same elements, also have a lot of distinctions to really make them unique decks that stand on their own. So let's take a look at both of them in turn. We're gonna start with the master deck. And here it is. Now starting with the card stock or on the tuck or the stock on the tuck here, it's a really deep blue, almost black, and it's textured to look and feel like the exterior of a book or like a linen page. Really nice texturing on it. It gives a really authentic and much more luxury feel to the deck overall. And it's covered with this foiling and embossing all the way through. It's actually two different colors of foil. You have the yellow gold and the more copper tones around it. Uh, and it forms this beautiful scene. Obviously, right in the center diamond, you have the master himself, because we're looking at the master deck. He's got the gun slung on his shoulder, uh, the cross in hand, and that beautiful flowing wide-brimmed hat with that ostentatious feather uh, across the top, really kind of emblematic of some of the styles of the time. Outside of the diamond framing him up, you have some extra elements, including some period buildings in the back, extra flourishes and details. And then in this corner, you have a skull with some of the flowers, presumably some of the tulips that were so popular in that time. Bottom has the name of the deck, Hunters of York, and a banner indicating this is the master version of the deck. Uh, turning to the side, you've got Hunters of York, name of the deck, and 1636 when it was set. Other side mentions Florus Drama Volume 1. This deck is actually meant to be the first in a series of decks. Uh, you can actually see the Vittoria decks that are Volume 2 in the same series now. The bottom here has some ad copy for Nikolai Arrow and also mentions these are printed, like most of Nikolai's decks, by NPCC. Uh, that's Noir Arts in Ukraine. 
top is completely blank and the back features this beautiful scene. This isn't the back design of the cards in any way, but it's kind of a silhouetted scene done in foil and strategic embossing, uh, kind of something you might see in an alleyway of York. You can see the buildings flanking the steps with the cobblestone path at the bottom. And interestingly, the embossing on this one doesn't really line up with the foil. You'll see it's kind of random embossing on the side, maybe evoking the feeling of like plants or bushes or something that are off in the shadows. It's a really cool effect and just an elegant feel to the tuck overall. Uh, this seal at the top is individually numbered. So you can see I've got 499 out of the 2500 deck edition. And the seal itself is actually inspired by the bookmark uh, in Nikolai Arrow's personal notebook. So he has his own kind of antique notebook, has these really stylized bookmarks, and that was the inspiration for the tuck seal you see here. As you open it up, a few more uh, details on the inner flaps, including a hundreds of York HY monogram on the flap here, 1636 mentioned again. On the interior of the tuck, you get some nice foil printing as well. That was a stretch goal in the campaign. Uh, this particular one is inspired by the four leaf clover. Uh, symbol of good luck and you can see that pattern working all the way to the bottom of the tuck so beautifully designed tuck case just a piece of art but let's take a look at the cards we'll start with the back design and here it is it's a really interesting ethereal look if you see pictures from the campaign definitely a little bit more contrast on this on the on the cards you would see in the campaign versus how they actually turned out I think it's interesting. Is it a really glowing effect overall? Uh, the background is that blue color, but you'll see it's got these little specks in it that kind of give it that extra uh, glow, I guess you would say to it. Uh, all of the coloring here is done in metallic inks though, uh, that uh, kind of copper colored metallic ink. The main element of course is gonna be the two tulips, front and center, uh, clear inspiration all the way through the deck. And then you have flourishes, details, scroll work spiraling all the way out and creating this really elegant framing all the way around. Really beautiful design. I think if I had one knock, it would be, I wish there had been a little bit more contrast. I wish the background had been a little darker to help that design pop out. But as you tilt this in the light, you really get to appreciate the shine and depth that he was able to achieve with those metallic inks. Finishes out in a super thin white poker border for a really striking and elegant back design. So there is that. Uh, the cards, you get some extra cards. First of all, you get an ad card that tells you a little bit of the story of the deck. If you read this, it tells you the story of some of the inspirations, including, of course, the tulip mania that was happening in the Netherlands at the time. Nice big hunter's medallion there in the center as well. You get a couple of jokers as well. And here are those two jokers, both marked with the X on this banner or kind of bookmark style banner in the corner. Uh, and they're interestingly choices for jokers. So one of them reads a little bit more like an ad card. You've got the name of the deck, Hundreds of York by Nikolai Arrow, Master Edition and Volume One of the Flores Drama. Beautiful patterning in the background, background, almost like a wallpaper applied to the background in that faded design in the back. So that's on the red one. And then the black joker or X card features a almost engraving style scene that you might find in York with a bridge spanning over the water. A very nice kind of parochial scene that you might see there. So there's your two jokers. Uh, now let's get into the rest of the deck. We'll start with the aces. There is no one power ace, but they're all beautifully uh, designed and decorated aces. They all feature larger than average pips in the center, set against that wallpaper style background. And each one of the ace pips is framed up by a, you know, a vine with flowers poking out there. You can see the tulips kind of strategically starting to bloom. Some of them just barely buds, some of them more in full bloom, but gives a really elegant framing overall to each one of the, uh, each one of the pips in the center. So really nicely done. I like the banner style pip and index. Definitely very readable. I love the little gold flourishes. Really kind of gives it some extra flair to this deck that uh, already has so much elegance to it all the way around. So there's your four aces that you get. Uh, the number cards are all, other than being set against that wallpaper background and the fancy pip and index in the corner, they're definitely custom pips all the way through but 
not too much ornamentation on the pips themselves in the center. They're definitely, you know, a little bit extra style to them, especially this club pip, but pretty standard layout, nice, easily usable and readable, and really just amped up by the extra design elements that they're set against with that background. That's really where these amp up. Otherwise, pretty standard number cards. So there's the spades, this is a real quick look. But the story and the artwork is really best expressed, like a lot of custom decks, in the court cards. And this is where I think Nikolai Arrow did his best work. All of the court cards feature these two-way designs, feature characters, not specific characters or anything like that, but these are 1600 characters that you might find. Uh, and they're all in these beautiful, elegant, ostentatious costumes that you might see at the time. Uh, so here's like on the King of Hearts, it has that beautiful wide brimmed hat, the feather, uh, the straps across his chest beautifully designed, kind of a muted tone, a little bit of a desaturated look to it overall. So not super bold, popping colors, but really nice shading done overall to provide some depth and you know extra life to each one of the characters. And I flip through the different court cards, you'll see each one individualized style. I love the queen here smelling a, or, uh, smelling a tulip in her hands. Uh, and then that really fancy headdress that she's wearing but all just beautifully designed and giving tons of life and expression. There's your Jack, and then into the King of Clubs. I love the, uh, the look on his face, that kind of proud and haughty look with that long barreled gun slung over his shoulder. Queen of Clubs with a glass of wine in her hand, and then into the Jack, and then taking a look at the Diamond Courts. I really like this one. The fan really nicely complements her, uh, her outfit there and the Jack of Diamonds, and then into the Spades. I'm menacing with that eye patch there. And the Queen of Spades with the love letter in her hand, and the Jack of Spades. So just a really beautifully designed set of cards overall. I think just did a great job with those courts. Uh, so that's the look at the master version of the deck. Let's see how the mistress version differs though. So here it is. Same basic style overall. You know, if I put the tuck side by side, you have the same style of foiling. Obviously, the tuck color has been changed to this more purple color. Almost looks maroon, but it's really a kind of a purple color to it overall. This time, the gentleman in the center has been replaced by the mistress herself. Uh, beautifully designed, uh, looking at that tulip in her hands. Maybe an incredibly expensive tulip in her hands. A lot of that same detailing you saw all the way around. And I love how that foil shines against the purple. Same elements on the sides. You get a little bit of a different scene in the front here. So rather than being an alley alleyway, has some buildings in the background with uh, some people there in the foreground. Really beautifully designed. Slightly just different coloring on the tuck seal itself, but otherwise same basic style. And as you open it up, you get some different printing on the interior of the tuck case. If you remember, the master deck was inspired by the four leaf clover. This one has the look of a handwritten letter. You have the foil lettering and that script going all the way down. Don't know that it says anything in particular, but it's a really beautiful look overall. So that's the tuck case. The cards themselves are all similar but completely, but change in a lot of ways, I would say completely. They were changed in a lot of ways to fit the more feminine theme of the mistress deck, starting with the back design. Now I like this one a lot more personally than the master version. You know, I think this one, in addition, you know, it's similar in a lot of ways, built around that flower, but adds a lot more details, almost like the flowers more in bloom. So a lot more vine work going all the way around. And I think that that purple or maroon color really provides a lot better contrast than you see on the master version. So while I like both versions, I like the mistress version a good bit more. Uh, the cards themselves, so you get a little bit of a difference here. It tells the same story, but this time features a tulip instead of the uh, the medallion that we saw in the Masters deck. Uh, and you get a different scene on this Joker card as well. Uh, this time looking at some castles or churches or something on a street in York. And then as you go through, you'll see the aces all feature a really prominent difference as well. Those flowers that were more muted on the master deck are now in full bloom, framing up the aces here. It's a striking effect. I love the colors and the explosion that this provides. Uh, really just brings this version of the deck to another level. 
Now, as I flip through this, you'll see that the colors on the deck are a lot brighter. Now, I'll show you again what I mean here, you know, is looking at these. So these have a little bit more of a brown or weathered look to them. These are a lot brighter, whiter, newer overall. Really kind of helps these pop off the card even more than we were looking at with the Masters deck. And you'll see that as you go through all of the number cards. But the court cards get more of the same treatment. So on paper, it's the same characters that we were looking at with the, uh, with the Master deck, but this time, they're done in much brighter colors. A lot of that desaturation, a lot less desaturation on these. These are more saturated, richer, more vibrant colors. So they really pop even that much more compared to the master deck. I really like the contrast edition on these. Uh, brings them even more to life. So definitely just beautifully designed, beautifully drawn. I love the work Nikolai Aero does on all of his court cards, but I think these may be some of the best that he's ever done. So that's some of the differences you look at the two. Uh, like I've said a few different times, I prefer the Mistress version. I think the tuck case in general looks much better. I love how much everything pops out and the extra contrast that you get on the cards as well. Uh, now, as far as handling and uses of the deck, I'll say NPCC, uh, they do a great job with a lot of aspects of printing, but handling is not one of them. These fan reasonably well. Honestly, I've had you know uh, NPCC decks that fan worse than these, but I'll say they do feel a little less slippery, a little bit harder to handle than some of the other decks. They certainly cut well enough, but fans and, and spreads and things like that, they're not gonna handle quite as well as some of the other decks you'll see from like Cardamundi or USPCC. So knock them down a few points on that. But when I think about uses, I don't think that's really what this is for. I don't think this is a deck that you're gonna really wanna break out for cardistry or even gameplay. Certainly it would fit, it would be useful for gameplay, but this is an art and collector's deck first and foremost. I think that's really where this is gonna find its place and leave its mark. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this chance to open up and take a look at what I think are some of Nikolai Arrow's best decks, really saying something with Hunters of York. So hope you enjoyed this look and make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings and make sure to vote for our next Free the Pip Friday selection. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Nikolai Arrow for designing these fantastic decks and I'll see you for the next one.